Yeah, so thank you so much for joining me today. It's release day. So firstly, happy release day. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Very exciting. <laughs> How does it feel? How's today been? Um, it's been really cool. I mean, it's Friday and I don't normally work Friday, so um I don't know, it was it's kind of been I've been on my own, but it's been kind of nice. Like I just went about um my day and did stuff, but like everyone's messages and things and like sharing the song and like you know that's really cool and everyone's really enjoying it so um that makes me really happy <laughs> yeah i guess of all the messages it'll feel like your birthday type thing <laughs> i think i've got more messages than i do on my birthday so um yeah. what does that say about my friends <laughs> exactly um but it's yeah 6 p.m your time do you have any big celebrations for tonight for the release um it's going to be relatively low-key like my manager and one of my friends is coming around we're going to go out for dinner um maybe have some prosecco while the sun's going down you know those kind of things. Keep it like relatively low key. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, low key is the best way, I guess. And um, I think now is the perfect time for you to release this because it's been about like three years since you put um some stuff out there on Spotify. So like, what have you been up to in that time? Um, I mean, obviously we had um the old uh pandemic, so yes, that um that kind of puts a damper on things. So like, obviously during that time, um yeah, you kind of go into a bit of hibernation. I mean, I, I um, as you know, created a, the film version of my show, Sigil, um, during that time as well. So I kind of focused on other projects where I could keep music alive um, without releasing because I did release Fabric um, during the pandemic, but it was, yeah, it's just, it, it was a really difficult time to do those kind of things. So I kind of just hibernated and wrote as much as I could and probably drank and ate more than I should. But um, yeah, I've been kind of, re-inspired by um I guess my own music and uh like my older stuff and like writing the new stuff so um yeah I've been sitting on the song for a while now and it's it's yeah it's great to like let the bird out of the cage kind of thing <laughs> yeah definitely and I feel like now's the perfect time too because like live shows are returning again so you can actually go out there and perform these releases to people that are going to listen to you yeah. exactly exactly yeah um which I'm looking forward to doing. Like I've, uh, it's been great so far, just performing and jetting about. It's just nice to have new material to be like, hey, like this is what I've been making, you know. Yeah, so it's called um, "Fair Weather Lover," which I love because um, my first impression before hearing the song was like, it's a strong title, it's unique. Tell me more about that and what that means to you. Um, I mean, the title, um, yeah, it kind of it came to me. I was having actually having an argument with my partner. <laughs> um and um who you also know <laughs> um and like it was nothing really serious but um it kind of got me into this mindset of like remembering other past relationships where um I've been with people that haven't quite grasped the situation that like what they view on stage or what they experience of me in a performative sense isn't like who I am all the time and it got me thinking and asking my friends about the same kind of things like people who only enjoy you when you're palatable or malleable or um, sexy or their version of what they think of you should be. And so essentially they're only enjoying you when you're good and happy and like ready to go, ready up for, up for anything kind of thing. And that's me like 0.5% of the time. <laughs> so um, yeah, it got me uh, thinking about that. And that's kind of where the song grew from. And also like, I've just asked my friends, I was like, hey, like, have you experienced this? And it, literally everybody has a story of a, of a lover or a partner or someone being like that towards them. And um, I was like, this is like universal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Relationships are always like a tricky one. But yeah. like being universal, like, um, and other people being able to relate to this, what are some like things that you did in your relationship to overcome this situation? Um, I mean, in my personal, I mean, Obviously, I've been with my partner for a long time. Um, and so in our relationship, I guess the biggest thing is to not let things, I guess, snowball. So for me, when I'm feeling like, hey, I'm not being listened to, I'm like, yo, this is what's happening and I'm not having a good time. Um, so I would like you to meet me in the middle, you know. Um, and I think communicating those kind of things when they're happening is more important than like stewing over them because I think that that just ends up in a kind of resentment place. And I mean, you don't want to resent this person that you've chosen to be with, you know? Yeah, I think that's good advice. It sounds like a lot of like boundaries and like collaboration and meeting each other halfway, which is what like, you know, relationships are a lot of the time. 100%. We're like two individual people that are choosing to go through life together. Um, and whether the relationship is, you know, a long-term one or a short-term one, I think having clear boundaries and being able to be like, 
hey, this is what I'm feeling and not being judged for that. Because that's a, an immediate red flag for me as if like you're in a relationship and then someone um, is like, oh, you're being emotional about this. I'm like, am I? Or are you just like not understanding what I'm saying or can't handle it? And if you can't handle that, then honey, you got another thing coming. <laughs> exactly. You got to take the good with the bad. Like um, in any situation, it's not always going to be good. There's always going to be like bad times that slip up and you got to like navigate through that. 100%. And yes, um, like going back to the song, it's like the production side. Like that's what I've always loved about your music. The production is so unique, and I guess like yeah, like amazing. So walk me through your production process for this particular release. Sure, sure. Um, for this one in particular, um, it's a little bit different because it's kind of not really a ballad, but it's also not like a banger. Um, I wanted it to be a bit of a journey that that grew as the song progressed, and my first kind of starting point was definitely um, those kind of yawning synths at the very beginning that I focused on. And I wanted to create something that almost mimics this concept of um, like, it reminded me of, you know, when you're lying on the beach and all of a sudden a cloud parts and the sun just like streams down onto your face mm-hmm. and it's kind of like searing. And I wanted to create that kind of feeling in an oral way. So um I, yeah, I kind of created that yawning synth that went underneath everything and it's kind of uh, confronting, but then I felt that with my voice, uh, which is kind of more like mid range and like warm, I thought it kind of, I don't know, they really gelled well together as like a juxtaposition and I wanted to keep the production quite minimal for the most part, um, purely because I wanted like those elements to really speak. And then having like just a really heavy hitting like kind of like bass when the chorus came in um, on top of using obviously like a lot of vocal layering like Nick Rouse who I did the vocal engineering with um, like this there was just so many sims by the end because I was just like oh I can hear another harmony I can hear another harmony so it was like I think we had like a hundred vocal sims more than um, by the end and, and like exporting that was a nightmare <laughs> but um, yeah it was I kind of yeah I wanted it to almost this choral effect to create like a a chorus of scorned lovers kind of thing but they're all kind of like I don't know welcoming you in and seducing you but it's also kind of you know there's a shot there's like a there's an edge to it I love that because I think that's what you makes your music um so unique and stand out from like the wealth of talent that we have out there which is great yeah thank you I guess that's all right. And it sounds like um you do a lot of the production yourself, which is great. It's great that you can like do the lyrics, you can do the music, the production. Um, but like where do you find all the time? Because you mentioned before that you also like work during the day. How do you have time for all this? Um, I don't. Um, my social life sac- is sacrificed constantly. But um I yeah, I work part-time and the place that I work, um, I mean, I think most musicians these days do. Before the pandemic, I was about to be able to just fully uh earn and write and just work on production like both for myself and other people and I was able to do that but it um it just hasn't that's just not the way that the cookie crumbled after um you know the last few years and I mean I think it's also great for me to find something that is part-time that can also like not take up too much of my brain space so that when I do have the time to write and produce I can really knock it out and be like energized to do that but yeah I mean as you said like I I'm kind of a one-stop shop so I like write produce and record most of my stuff it's normally when it comes to the vocal that I want to um work with another producer or a vocal engineer um just so I can kind of let go of the track and become an artist because the the production side is kind of like the maths and the meat of it and then once I like take off that hat, I want to be like, oh, who is WCB? How am I performing? That's what's the emotion that I'm giving to it rather than still thinking about like, oh, I need to like mix that a bit better or whatever. Yeah. Do you find it hard to wear the two hats between like WCB and producing? Um, I kind of enjoy it, to be honest. It's really kind of like a, a left brain, right brain type of thing. Um, and it's fun when you hear people really commenting on like what you make as a, as a producer and then be like, Oh, who produces your track? And I'm like, well, actually it's me. And it's like, (laughs) yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of a nice thing to have, um, to have like the complete kind of artistic license to do whatever I want. And I mean, I I love to collaborate as well, but um, for me, I think learning how to produce and then, and then using that for my own music was a real um, kind of game changer in how I found my own sound. Yeah, and I guess that's got its advantages too because firstly, you don't have to pay someone else to do all your production 
And it also means you have the final say, because sometimes if someone else is producing it, um, there can be disagreements between like your ideas and theirs, but it sounds like you've got the final say and what you put out is a true reflection of you. Yeah, I mean, the caveat of that is that um, I could just like work something to the bone <laughs> as well. Um, so it's also like a real lesson in learning how to um, stop, you yeah. know, to be like, okay, this is done now. I need to like move on and like enjoy it for what it is, you know? Otherwise I'd just like, I'd probably still be working on the first track I ever released. <laughs> how do you know when to stop and when it's like, you're like, no, I can't play with this track anymore. It's good as it is. Generally it's when I'm like, okay, I've got it to a point where it sounds really great to me. And then I, um, that's when I go into like vocal production. And then that's when I, if I whoever I'm working with on that like last kind of two sessions worth, um, that's when I'm like, hey, um, I, what are you thinking of this mix? Like, what do you feel? What, you know, and it's a bouncing an idea off there. And I mean, obviously, as you said, I get the final say. So if, if what, if the, what they're offering as a new set of ears, isn't what I'm feeling for this, the track, then it just doesn't go in. But it's great. I think towards the end of um, the process to share it with other people and get like a bit of feedback on like, Hey, how's this feeling to you? Um, and ultimately, as you said, it's, it's going to be my call, but I really appreciate like hearing from like different kind of music listeners what what they like about it or what they don't like about it and so that's when I start to show people it and that's when I kind of make the decision that like I, the baby yeah. is ready to be born <laughs> yeah I can totally understand that too because I guess um with your own work you can become so attached to it that sometimes it's hard to step back and say how are other people going to think of this because you put like your heart and soul into it so it's good to see it from other people's perspective absolutely I think it's very similar to like a photographer or a painter or like you know you want to do that last like yeah brush of the book, but it's like you know you have to you have to really discipline yourself to be like it's it's good like it, you're never going to be perfect to, I'm never going to be like perfect to me so I have to just let go of that idea yes <laughs> like work to perfection but let go of the idea of it <laughs> yeah and it's good that you've got that self-awareness too that you're never going to achieve that amount of perfection that I guess you want to strive to do I mean, why do you think it's taken me three years to have a song out? <laughs> Fair point, yeah. <laughs> um, look, talking about the production, like the visualizer that you released to today is amazing. Um, tell me more about that and like what message you're hoping that visualizer portrays. Um, with the visualizer, I, again, because there's, the, uh, for me, I think it's a touch of synesthesia where each song has like a texture and a color and um for me anyway and so I kind of work towards that and for this particular visualizer I actually all the back all the background stuff that's in the in the visualizer I actually shot when I was touring in Darwin um <laughs> you know, on my iPhone just um Spike and I having a couple of beers down at um Darwin Ski Club and the sunset was just coming through and it was absolutely stunning and we just sat there and like time lapsed the the sun setting on the sea and that really that color scape and like that moment and that kind of sparseness of there was not much else going on around us and it was barely anyone at the bar it was like a midweek type thing it was so beautiful and I, I really wanted to incorporate that um, into the track into the visualizer and so and it also went with the idea of like especially the first opening lyrics of the song like no man is an island except for you I had this concept of someone being on a deserted island and there's almost a mirage on the horizon and then I was that mirage, you know? Um, and it's kind of a bit tongue-in-cheek for me where, you know, like, am I letting myself be, like, sexualized by this person but am I also a little bit scary? <laughs> um, and for me, I like to walk that fine line of, of beautiful but also kind of a bit scary. So, yeah, the idea was a mirage and um, like a bit of a fever dream, like it's hot, you're on the beach, you haven't got water, you're like, oh, you know, what am I seeing in the distance? Um, and then also on the flip side of that, I have this weird fascination with um, anatomical angels in the Bible <laughs> because they're kind of terrifying. They're like, they have a hundred eyes and all these arms and all these wings and they're not like what, what we kind of have come to know and what angels look like. Um, you know, humanoid with like wings. It's like a ball of eyes and limbs and wings. And it's again, kind of beautiful, but also terrifying. So I wanted to incorporate that as well. 
Yeah, I love that because it's not just a song. It's a full like experience. It's a story. You've gone like all out with this, which is what we love to see. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, yeah, think about the spiritual stuff. I was just noticing because I love that stuff behind you too, um, all those symbols and that sort of stuff. I was just like eyeing that off as well as you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually, um, it's a hat that I, um, I actually made it. Um, oh, it's a hat. Yeah, it's a hat that I made, um, and the brim has got, like, all these symbols around it. Um, I just made to wear out one night, and then now I just, like, really love it. So I was like, it's going to be artwork on my wall now. That's, that's great. I love it. <laughs> and talking yeah. about the angels and the spiritual stuff, because you, um, I noticed that you said before that your music, you've described it as a um, unique spiritual journey. So tell me more about that and, like, what you're trying to do with your music. Um. I, I think of my music as, a, as an opportunity to escape. Um, I think of performance or when people come to my, to my performances as an opportunity to escape. And this kind of, I guess, conjuring of energy. And I, um, it's quite cool watching people come with me on that journey when I'm performing as well, because often people afterwards are like, I don't know what the fuck that was, but... I was here for it the whole way through and that was really exciting and and scary but I was with you and like I don't know I, I guess when I go to gigs that's what I want to feel I want to feel inspired I want to feel challenged I want to feel excited um and so that's kind of where that spirituality comes from and this kind of conjuring of energies has always been my ethos when it comes to anything anything in my life when it's creative I mean it should shift the air in the room it should make you feel a bit different after you've heard it you know um and yeah, I mean, whether it, whether it appeals to people or like some people and some people it doesn't, but I um, I always want someone to feel something, whether it's good or bad. Yeah. Yeah. And I can resonate with that too, because I've seen two of your shows live. And mm. again, like um, it's really rare that I can't find the words to describe something, but just like the whole, I guess, environment, like, I don't know, it didn't feel like a normal concert or gig. It just felt like this, I don't know, this weird out of, out of world experience. And I guess like, the, the fact that you're able to do that is a very um, good skill to have because not many people can do that. Well, thank you. I mean, yeah, I've been I've been on stage since I was very little, so I think feeling the comfortable feeling comfortable there and comfortable enough to be, I guess, vulnerable enough to let people see that that energetic energy, like that energetic kind of the shift of energy is it's a vulnerable place to exist in. And I mean, it's quite taxing, but it's also like really, really rewarding. And yeah, as you said, like um, it's, it's cool to see people experience that and feel that. Yeah. It's definitely a gift to be able to give someone that experience. Oh, thank you. <laughs> From me to you. <laughs> and I believe this is like a track of your upcoming album. Is there an album in the works? I believe. Yes, yes, there is. Um, I say while well, I'm like sitting on a few that are still in demo stages, but um, when I, I, I work very well to a deadline, so I'm sure it'll be done. Um, yeah, I'm working on, an, on a record um, called Moon Boy. And um, yeah, it's we're hoping for um, mid to late this year, we're, we're going to have it out. And um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. It's the first time that I've done a larger body of work. And I think just where my skill set is now and where my confidence with my writing and how weird I want to be. Um, I feel very settled in that place. So I, it's the right time for me to do that. Yeah, I love that. And obviously without giving too much away, like what, do you, what can you tell us about the upcoming album and what we can expect in terms of like, I guess, um, songs or themes, that sort of stuff? I mean, I guess sticking with who I am as a person, it's going to be pretty vulnerable in points, um, but also, yeah, po political, um, kind of sexual, talking about um, addiction. Um, yeah, I, but all kind of in a, in a, I don't know why, but my songs always kind of end up a little bit like bedroom songs, you know what I mean? And it's like, I don't know how they end up like that, but they it must be something that I'm putting in the water or something. Um, but yeah, I kind of, yeah, there's a, there's a sexiness to it. There's, um, like a kind of bass heavy energy to it I don't know I'm I'm really looking forward to showing people more of what I've got and I've got a couple of tracks that are coming out from it as well so they're in the bank ready to go um which is cool <laughs> 
I love that. It sounds like there's a very good mix of themes and it feels like there's going to be a bit of something for everyone, no matter what their experience or taste might be in terms of music and life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not not every song is as long as, as this particular release, but I kind of wanted to, I don't know, I, what's wrong with a four-minute song? <laughs> I guess, like, you know, I think music's changed a lot now because I was listening to this album that came out this morning and there was one track that was, like, a minute long and, you know, now there's some people doing longer songs. So, and I feel like that's just how the listening, I guess, age is at the moment. Yeah, and I mean, I think... It goes to it goes to show like how much things change and how how much they ebb and flow. So really, as an artist, I think your best asset is to stick to to who you are and what how you want it to be. Because the minute you start to write music to appease like a trend or um, like what's going on stylistically, you kind of start to lose the authenticity of it. And especially being my first album, I just want to be as authentic as 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 brutally possible, um, and then move on from there. Yeah. And I love that too, because as you said with trends, like trends can expire, whereas if you're putting yourself out there and you the true version of yourself, that's never going to expire. Well, that's that's my thought process anyway. <laughs> exactly. Um, and like I just want to talk about your sound as well, because um when I listen to your latest release, uh, and you've got that instrumental that starts off with, and then you're captivated from that start and it right to the end. And I don't know, like I listen to my music on Spotify. So I feel like, and my music taste is so random. So I feel like whatever comes afterwards could be so random and so hard to like, you end on this spiritual journey and then you could have like some heavy metal thing that pops up next. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Um, I, I, I guess as I, as I said, like if I can take you out of your day for four minutes, um, then my job is done, you know, like, I think that's, that's what I love about a really good song. That's what I love about the artists that I listen to is, you know, whether, again, whether it's an, a minute song or a four minute song, you're like, you should be going somewhere, you know, you should be taken somewhere. You should feel different afterwards. You should, feel, you should be able to hear something new each time you're listening to it. Um, and that's really, yeah, that's my goal with it. Like, that was that was my goal with this track, and, and especially, especially, yeah. Yeah, well, I feel like you portrayed your goal very well because that's definitely how I felt when I listened to it. And talking awesome. about like music that takes you places, who are some of your inspirations? Like, what music takes you somewhere? Um, I really like artists like Chelsea Wolf. Um, I really love Zola Jesus. Um, Sev Deliza, Serpent with Feet, FKA Twigs. Um, and most of these artists as well are not afraid to be really weird and not, again, not go with trends um, and create something that is completely individual to them. And I think that's where, I mean, I don't think I sound like any of these artists, but that's what I, that's what I get from their music. And so my only, um, my only goal create it creatively is to be able to slot in with artists that I that I believe do that. So I wanna I wanna kind of emulate what their achievement is rather than what their sound is. Um yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that because I guess that's what makes you you and that's what's gonna make you and those other artists also like stand out and just being your true version of yourself. Yeah, yeah for sure. So um, what's next for you? So I know you've got the album coming out. You said you might be like releasing some more singles up, but are you doing like any live shows or how can people like come out and see you and support you if they want to see more from you? Um, well, I've got a show coming up on the 24th of February um, at my home away from home, Low 302 in Sydney City in Surrey Hills. Um, so that's my next show at the moment. I was actually trying to take a bit of a step back from live performance while I'm finishing the the record, but um, it just doesn't seem to happen for me. Like someone will be like, "Can you come and play on this?" or "Can you come and do this?" And um, I love that too because being on stage is like, I don't know, it's such a gift, it's such a joy. Seeing as we haven't been able to do it for so such a long time, when you get invited to play somewhere or um, you know, venues like looking um to have to book you, it's hard to say no. So um, I know currently I'm booked for the twenty fourth. Um, and during that time, I'll be recording my um, the title track for the record as well. So, um, yeah, busy, busy month. But, yeah, um, if you want to come and see me live, 24th of February at Low 302. Yeah, sounds great. I mean, would um, the songs that you're performing there, would there be, like, would people hear songs that might be on the album or are you going to stick to what's already been released? What's going to happen at that show? Well, I 
we'll probably do a mix because I also like when I'm when I'm working on songs and I've got them in a demo stage or like a, a, a higher than demo stage. I like to play them just to see what the audience response is, just to see how it feels to perform. And also helps me when I go into the recording studio to do the, lay down the vocals. It gives me a, um, a better idea of like energetically where I'm going, because as I said, like it really is a, a to and fro uh, with me and the audience. So um, yeah, I'll definitely be playing new stuff. Um, I'll be playing the track that I released as well um, and probably some older stuff as well. So keep it a good, fresh mix. I love it. You can't go wrong. When you've got a mix like that, you, you can't go wrong with it at all. <laughs> so that's basically like the end of my questions. Was there anything that you wanted to add or you want people to know about this release or about like the upcoming album or you as an artist? I mean, yeah, if you like the song, please um, like it, share it, playlist it. And um, yeah, give me a review on Triple J on Earth because that's the beat boops that um, make us money and make us um get further recognition um yeah and follow me on all the socials um i'm on all of them at um as wcb you'll be able to find me there but yeah like keep following along i've got more music to come this year i swear it's not going to be another three years <laughs> <laughs> well i guess some things are worth the wait so if this is the music that you're passionate about uh, maybe it's better than like releasing stuff like regularly that you weren't as passionate about yeah absolutely yeah, but what I've got coming up is really exciting and I'm really passionate about these tracks. So I'm looking forward to her sharing them with people. Yeah, cool. I'm really excited to hear what you've been up to. I'm really keen for this album. Awesome. <laughs>